Hello. In this short video, we're going to talk about a spherical coordinate. In a few minutes, I'm going to explain what are the spherical coordinates. But for time being, I want you to look at this graph. This graph called a sphere because a sphere is a set of point that every one of those points on the space have a fixed distance from a fixed point and that's called the center therefore this is called a center of symmetry but there are many other cases on the Cartesian plane on the Cartesian uh, space x z and a y and an X, I don't know why it's changing differently, X, Y, and a Z, you have, in an X, Y plane, you have a fixed angle. Like you're gonna have a part of the circle. And maybe in here, I make my theta to become a fixed number C. But the distance from origin can be changed it could be one it could be two it could be three it could be four it could be five and at every one of these point z also can vary you know you can have for example for all of them z become five therefore this is five this is five this is five therefore what i see right here my y can vary, my z can vary, but my c is a fixed number. And this one called a vertical half plane, because that's the vertical half plane. And sometimes it is good because this one has also uh, have a center of the symmetry and also if you look at that graph if I have that graph if I call this one a y and a x and a z but in here I'm going to pick up some angle from z value and I said this is fixed and is any angle between 0 and pi over 2. But theta can change. Theta can become anywhere from all the way to 0 degree all the way to 360 degree. But this angle I'm going to call the phi is the fixed angle. But the theta can vary. And at the same time, the distance from the center also can vary too. Therefore, this angle could be 30 degrees from north with this distance, 30 degrees with that distance, 30 degrees with that distance, 30 degrees with that distance, this distance. Therefore, if theta go all the way from 0 to 360, and that distance become the distance from the 0, 0, 0, 0, you're gonna have right here a half a cone. Half a cone, you get it when you have a fixed distance from a z-axis. You get a half a plane when you have a, a fixed angle from x-axis. But you see here, the only thing is fixed is the center from a center. Let me call it a row. That row is fixed. But remember, Rho is fixed, but those angle, which is theta and which is phi, they are various. In this one, theta is fixed, but your z and your r are changing. And in here, your phi, the angle from a zero is fixed, but the distance from the zero, 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 and theta could be various. Okay, what is the spherical coordinate? This is a spherical coordinate. If you remember, whenever you had Cartesian, Cartesian, you had x, y, z, and you divided this one in a grid lines, which call it rectangular coordinate plane, 
And if you want to give an address to this location, you said how many X in here and how many Y here, that is going to give you a location. Therefore, in order to get that grid point, you have straight distance on the X axis and you have a straight distance away from X axis. And this one distance is away from the Y axis and this is away from the X axis. But if you want to get a location on the Earth, first you should know that this radius of Earth, we're going to call it rho. For the Earth, I know the radius is almost 4,400 miles. But that location has an issue. You're going to say, number one, how many degrees away from the what? Away from the north? Or how many degree you are from prime meridian? In this case, both of them are angles. This is an arc length right here. Therefore, that's an angle. And also prime, prime meridian is also an angle. Therefore, in here, we divided our xy plane into a grid paper and all sides are a straight line but in here we divided our sphere into in circle what i mean by circles i want you to think of hula hoop go at the equator and you have the largest hula hoop and the angle between around the hula hoop is 360. Then make the hula hoop get a smaller and a smaller and a smaller and a smaller and get a zero. That's called semi-sphere. The angle around the hula hoops is 360 degree. And from today I'm going to call that angle theta. You can go from zero all the way to 360 degree. These are circles that they are parallel to the equator and it determines your latitude. How far you are from the equators. Therefore, how far you are from the equators is determined by number of a degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, or you go to the north. Then also I want you to think of hula hoop, but this time I want you to think of half a hula hoop. And put half a hula hoop right here and a half a hula hoop right here therefore that angle is away from the North Pole and I'm gonna call that angle right here that angle right here I'm gonna call it a Phi and I hope you know that angle Phi is a half a hula hoop and is only from 0 to 180 degree therefore prime meridian or your longitude are half of hula hoop and you can go only from a north to a south and look at this one right here when you this is your prime meridian you get 30, 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree 90 degrees your east 120 135 150 180 is your north or you can go 30 degree to the left 60 75 and so on and so on therefore from today we're gonna call a spherical coordinate your row is a straight distance, is from the center to the surface of the earth and, or the sphere, and we call it a row. Theta is your latitude, and that's the full circle, and is parallel to the equator, and this is, requires 0 to 360 degree. Some textbook, they put the theta at the end. Some textbook put the theta in the middle. Therefore, they will going to define that this is your longitude or latitude. Therefore, this is your latitude. 0 to 360. And this is your half of the hula hoop. And that's the angle from a north pole. And that's go from 0 to 180 degree. Okay. Let's see, therefore, I'm sorry, from now on you should know, if you have half a cone, if you have a sphere, 
if it's a half plane, these are easier to evaluate the triple integral in a spherical coordinate rather than Cartesian or cylindrical. Remember, this one was Cartesian. This one was R and a theta, which is the polar coordinate. By adding a Z, means you have a circle stack on top of each other with the same radius, and that's called cylinder. Then you have rho, you have a theta, and you have a phi. Distance from the center to the surface. This one is going to become your latitude, and this one is going to become your longitude. Let's see how these three can be convert to one another. Let's talk. Number one, remember the difference between cylindrical <coughs> and spherical. The theta is the same in both of them. That's good. This R is a radius of a circle. This row is a radius of a sphere. Therefore, if I go back right here and say this one is my Y, and this one is my x. I'm going to take this angle and I'm going to call this one the change in theta. That's the piece of the angle from 0 to 360. And I'm going to take this one, the change in r, because this is my radius, this is the change in r. This one is nothing except s equal to r times theta, but your theta is d theta, and you know the area of this one as we discussed it before is r dr d theta. Okay, at least we know, talk about polar coordinate and how we can find the area of that piece of that sector. I'm going to change this one to three dimension. And I'm going to find its volume. And whatever the volume of that one is, is going to become your spherical instead of a dv. But before I go there, I want you to think of this as a d, as a y, as a x, and as a z. If this is your angle theta, and if this is your r, I want you to take that one and project it and say, okay, for example, for the z equal to 5, this z is 5, this z is 5, this z is 5, this z is 5. Do you see all the z? Therefore, this is nothing except projection of the r onto the space. Every projection, when you project it, it becomes perpendicular. Therefore, this one is perpendicular. I'm going to call this one an R. And if this point is on the surface of my sphere, if it's on the surface of my sphere, that distance I'm going to call it a row. And I'm going to call that angle away from a z-axis, I'm going to call it a phi. Therefore, according to this data, I have that R. And this line, and this line, these two are parallel line. Therefore, you know this is a projection of the R. I have a theta, I have a phi, I have a rho. And I know this one is my z. Therefore, from today you have to know, if you want to go from R theta to a z, which is a cylindrical, Two, rho, phi, no, theta, and a phi, your theta is the same. All I need is that phi, and I need to find the rho. I hope you know this one, since this is a 90 degree, rho is your hypotenuse. Some students have difficulty with that issue, with, with seeing that. Therefore, that's the reason sometimes I draw my R, if it's like this, when I project it, I make my R straight instead of a slant. Then they can see it's 90 degree. 
and then I say this is rho, this is r, this is phi, and this is z. Then I do know my rho is r squared plus z squared, and your rho r squared is nothing except s, oh, that's a rho squared, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and that's the equation of the sphere. If the rho is 2, therefore the radius of a sphere is 2. 4, radius of a sphere is 4. Therefore, from today, if you have x, y, z, you can easily find your rho. But somebody said, if you give me r and a theta and a z, how do you find those? I said, theta go right here, but my r, if you're giving me the r and a z, that's how you find your rho. Okay, I found my rho. The theta is already given, but how do you see phi? Phi is right here. And remember, you have z, and you easily can find a rho, and easily you can say your phi is arc cosine of z over a rho. But what is your rho? Is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, or your phi is inverse cosine of z over r squared plus z squared. Therefore, you have your r, you have your z, therefore, from here, you can easily find your phi. Okay, let's, and what happens if you have x, y, and a z? And you want to go to rho, theta, and a phi. I want you to please know. If I take this x and change it to polar coordinate, it's r cosine theta. And a spherical coordinate, it does have a theta. All I have to remove my r. What is your r here? It is very important to know that the sine of phi is r over a rho and from today you have to know your r is rho sine of phi if you know these triangles you know everything therefore if you have rho phi and theta your x is going to become rho sine of phi cosine theta it's just like the polar but instead of r you're going to put rho sine of phi but how about the y value? The y value is r sine of theta, but instead of the r, you're going to put the rho sine of phi sine of theta. Okay, therefore, if you give me this one, I can easily find x and y. But by knowing this, how can I find my z? z is right here. And you can say your z is, let, let me write it this way, it's easier. Cosine of phi is z over a rho. By having the rho and a phi, you can find the z also. Therefore, these two are extremely important. Z is rho cosine of phi and r is rho sine of phi. Do you see how often from a spherical to Cartesian? Let's give an example. Okay, my rho is 5. My theta is 2 pi over 3. And my phi is pi over 4. I want to know my x. My x is r cosine theta and what is your r do you see how i draw that triangle this is your r this is your rho this is your phi this is your z and your r is correspond to the what to the opposite of phi therefore that become rho sine of phi cosine theta what is your rho five sine of power 4, radical 2 over 2, cosine of 2 power 3, negative 1 half, and the corresponding x value to that 
A spherical coordinate is negative 5 radical 2 over a 4. What is your y value? Is r sine of theta. But what is your r? r corresponds to the opposite. Therefore, it is rho sine of phi sine theta. And that rho is 5. Sine of phi is radical 2 over 2. And cosine is, I'm sorry, and sine of 2 power 3 is radical 3 over 2. Therefore, that becomes 5 square root of 6 over 4. But somebody said, what is my z? z is adjacent. Is rho cosine of 5. And is 5 cosine of power 4 is radical 2 over 2. And is 5 square root of 2 over 2. Then I change easily from a spherical to the Cartesian, which is negative 5 square root of 2, which is 5 square root of 6 over 4, and this is a 4 also, and 5 square root of 2 over a 2. But somebody said, how about if you give me 7, 3, and a 4, this is x, y, and a z, and change it to the spherical, to rho, to the theta, to the phi. I said, very easy. Rho, look at this one right here, is z squared plus r squared. r squared is x squared plus y squared. Therefore, your rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's the equation of a sphere. And that's 49 plus 9 plus 16. 25 and 50, 75, that's make it a 74. Therefore, your rho is the square root of 74. The x and the y are in the first quadrant. Therefore, your theta should be between 0 and 90 degree. And how do you find theta? Theta, you have done it many times. Theta is inverse tangent of 3 over 7. That's your theta. And this is your theta prime is a reference. And your theta prime is the same as the theta because in the first quadrant. But somebody said, what is my phi? Look at your phi right here. What do you know? You know your z because it's given. And also, you know rho because rho is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Therefore, your phi is inverse cosine of z over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And that's the formula we use. If the z is positive, if the z is positive, therefore that angle is going to become positive. And that angle is going to be between 0 and 90 degree. And remember 5, we said, is only from 0 to 180 degree. And if z is positive, it's from 0 to 90. And if z is negative, it's from 90 to 180 degree. Okay, and this is my phi. My phi is inverse cosine of z over rho squared. And I just change it very quickly. Therefore, by a little bit of practice, you can switch it from your Cartesian to the spherical or from a spherical to the Cartesian. But somebody said, okay, all I have to know is these two triangles. X, Y, R, and a theta. That's the polar to Cartesian or Cartesian to a polar. And this one is a R, this one is a rho, and this one is a Z, and this one is a phi, and this is a 90 degree. And that takes care of the spherical. Therefore, here you should know x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. In here, you should know rho squared equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. In here, we should know x is equal to r cosine theta. But in here, you should know that the sine of phi is r over a rho, and your r is rho sine of a phi. 
Therefore, instead of a R, you have to put rho sine of phi. In here, y equal to r sine of phi theta, you replace for the r that one, and you'll be done. In here, you should know the cosine of z is equal, the cosine of phi is z over a rho, and from today you have to know z is rho cosine of phi. From here, you can find your phi. Your phi is inverse cosine of z over a rho, and your rho is a square root. Some place I made a mistake a few minutes ago, just like that one. Because in here, your rho is inverse cosine of z over a rho, and I forgot to put the rho inside the square root. I did not do it. This is only a rho. And see, that's only a rho, not rho square. And that should be a square root of rho square, and that should become only a rho. Sorry for that mistake. Therefore, from these two triangles, you can learn many, many, many things. Okay, let's go back and see how we can change it, the volume. My change in volume in a Cartesian is dz, dy, dx. You can write this one six different ways. The volume also can be written as dz, r dr d theta or you can call it as a d theta dr but very seldom we write it there and that's called cylindrical and this is cartesian today we're gonna do it in a spherical what is a spherical a spherical you take that portion of a sector and you're going to project it. Remember, these are different z. Like, for example, I'm moving a z5 unit. All this go in here. And this become my top of my sphere. Therefore, in here, this one is the change in your r. In here, I have an arc length. Hmm. And please pay attention, in here I have a row. Right now I have an issue. When I project that one, no, I made a mistake. When I project that one, that projection is right here. See, that projection coming right here. Therefore, I have this, I have this, I have that, I have that. And if I make this one just like a three dimension, the three dimension, I'm going to have another one, another one, and I didn't do a good job. Let me see if I can do it here. I'm going to have it here. I'm going to have it here, and I'm going to have it here and here. Therefore, I'm going to do it here, and just a little bit cleaner than the last one. Okay. Tell me what was this. This one was your S from that S. And that S is R D theta. Okay. But please pay attention. That portion from here, you have it here to here. Therefore, the distance right here, let me see what I'm gonna, how I'm going to explain it right here. The distance from the distance from here to here, that's the change in row. Therefore, remember the length is going to be the change. Oh, right here, that's a change in row, and that's the change in row because that's the change in that distance. Okay, you got the change in distance. But you have length and a width. But this is also arc length. You have two arc lengths. You have this one and you have that one. This one is on the surface of the earth. One from a longitude and you're going to get one from the latitude. One from a longitude, one from latitude. You have this one and also you have that one. Therefore, both of them are turning. This one is born from that phi. Because if I go here... 
to here, that's a change in phi. Therefore, this one is not R times theta. This is going to become rho. Rho is a radius, d phi. Okay, and this one is S, and I'm going to write it right here, rho d phi. I got this, I got this, and that changing the rho. Then the volume of that portion is going to become changing rho r d theta and rho d phi. Everything is in a spherical coordinate. Everything. I have a rho, I have a phi, I have a theta. I don't need that r. I have to go back to that triangle and find out what was that r in term of a what? In term of a spherical. And that r, I got it right here, and that was my r, rho sine of phi. Therefore, I go right here and I said, I have rho sine of phi. Then tell me what is the change in volume. You have two rows, rho square, sine of phi. Please pay attention. Whenever we talk about cylindrical coordinate or polar coordinate, the factor was born from changing a variable to dz dy dx to dz dr d theta was a r. On the spherical, the factor is rho squared sine of phi. This is sitting in place of that r. Therefore, that is a factor. Everything else is d rho, d phi, d theta. Therefore, from today you have to know that when we talking about Cartesian, we have dz dy dx, that's your volume. Cylindrical, we have dz or dr d theta. For the volume, for the spher uh, spherical, we have rho squared sine of phi. This is my factor. And this is part of the volume. And I become d rho, d phi, d theta. Okay. Somebody said there is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 16. Give me the volume of that sphere. I said, okay. The volume of that sphere, I have rho squared, sine of phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. I want my rho, this is the volume of one little cubed. And remember, this is, should be on a straight line. See, that is... That is a straight line. See, that's your D rho. These are your D rho. Therefore, this is your D rho. This is your S equal to rho D phi. And this one was S equal to R D theta. And your R was rho sine of phi D theta. And the volume of that thing, your sphere is going to be full of this. Is rho squared sine of phi d rho, d phi, d theta. I know my rho. My rho here is 4. I'm going to find the semi-sphere and I'm going to double it. I'm going to make my rho go from 0 to 4. When you talk about the sphere, you need the whole theta and also you need the whole longitude. You need the whole latitude, whole longitude. But because we got half of it, I'm going to go from 0 to power 2. Then I'm going to double it. And my theta, I need only half of it from 0 to 180 degree. Whatever that answer is, I am going to double it. And that becomes the volume of a sphere. Let's do it with respect to rho. Rho cubed over 3. From 0 to 4. And that's 64 over 3. Let's do it with respect to a phi. You have 64 over 3. Sine of phi. D phi. From 0 to power 2. 
And what is the integral of the sine? Negative cosine. I have negative 64, 3, cosine of 5 from 0 to power 2. And that becomes cosine of power 2 is 0 minus cosine of is 1. Negative times negative is positive. I have 64 over 3. Let's talk about the theta. You have 64 over 3, 0 to pi, d theta, and that becomes 64 over 3, theta from 0 to pi, and that's 64 pi over 3, unit cube. But I got to double that. But let's remember what we had. We had 4 third pi r cube. That was the volume of the sphere. In here, that r is the radius of your sphere, which we call it r here. 4 thirds of 4 cube. That's 64 pi over 3. I got 64 pi over 3 right here. But y here is a 4, and y here, we said we have to double it. Please remember that. Please. What we did here, we went from here to here. That phi was 90 degree. That 90 degree is only a quarter of it. Another quarter is here. If I have done from negative power to, to power 2, then you should have doubled it. Because you went, you have to remember your, your uh, longitude. Your longitude is only from half a hula hoop. Half a hula hoop is only, I know, the, uh, you know, somebody said, why is a half? Because you can either, it's 180 degrees to get from north to south, but somebody said, how about the other one? It's from another direction, it's also 180 degrees. But in this case, you have to multiply by four because you have a piece here, you have a piece here, you have a piece here, you have a piece here. Therefore, we, because you did your row, your 5 from 0 to power 2, and 0 to power 2 is only 90 degree, and you only take care of the first arc, then you have to multiply this one by a 4, and that becomes 4, 64 pi, over 3 u cube, and see, that gives you exactly the same answer as that one. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video.